Yo guys, your boy, my boy, how you doing? Welcome to another video, yes sir. Um, today I don't really know what we are reacting to in the channel. I don't know. Somebody sent me uh this. He said uh, it's based on a true story. React to it; it's gonna blow your mind. So yeah, we're gonna react to it. Somebody uh, sent me a Russian sleep ex uh, experiment explained. Let's go, man. Let's go. Where he expects to see his human test subjects. Whoa, 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 whoa. A Russian researcher enters a room where he expects to see his human test subjects alive and well. Instead, he witnesses absolute pandemonium. He hears human test subject. What year is this? Screams of the damned, and in front of him is a body that's been torn apart and eviscerated. It looks as though the Antichrist himself has been in the room. Even the survivors have had chunks of flesh ripped from their arms and legs. Their fingers shown exposed bone. Their faces. That's nasty. That's nasty. But we started the video straight away. I, I don't understand. Are sheared of skin. What is this inferno of madness, thinks the researcher. Uh, this wasn't exactly how the experiment was supposed to turn out, he thinks. Okay, the food wasn't great. We might have made those beds a bit more comfortable. But tearing each other to shreds over a bit of lost sleep? Come Why? On. What the heck? Start from the beginning. But guys, that's not very comrade of you. That nightmare scenario is straight out of the famous Russian sleep experiment, if you believe it really- Famous? I haven't heard about it. I never heard about it. Have you guys heard about this one? I've never heard about it, man. ...really happened. Let's start from the beginning of the story and- Thank you! Thank you! Thank and then you! then we'll tell you what our team of world-class sleuths dug up on the truth behind this horrific experiment. So, it's the late 1940s, and Soviet-era researchers have created a stimulant that they believe can keep a person awake for a long time, which is handy right. when you're fighting a war. In the Second yeah. World War, the Germans had their version of such a stimulant, which was a formidable methamphetamine called pervitin. The Americans and the British would dose their troops with the amphetamine benzedrine, which was similar to your garden variety speed. The Soviets are looking to up the ante and use their own version of a drug, which won't lead to a total wipeout after a three-day long binge. They've made something special, but they need to test it on humans first. It's not hard to find test subjects since prisoners of war were a plenty in the- Wow, y'all niggas tried in prisoners. Wow, they are humans too, man. They ain't animals. Wow, y'all niggas tripping. 1940s, and where prisoners were concerned, bypassing ethical considerations wasn't such a big deal. They set up a test area where five subjects will stay. It's a sealed right. environment into which the researchers can release the stimulant in gas form and check if the levels of oxygen are okay. The subjects have been given dried food, each a bed with no bedding, running water, and a toilet. The researchers listen to the subjects through a microphone, and there are cameras through which they can monitor the subjects. The only portholes to the outside are five-inch thick glass windows, which are barely good enough to see a shadow from. The scene is set, and the five men seem in good spirits for the first three days. The gas is doing its job, and the researchers are pleased about that. One researcher tells another, Nazi meth, what a joke. Just wait until the world sees what we've cooked up. Comrade Stalin will be most pleased. The subjects have agreed to try and stay awake for 30 days, and have been falsely informed. It might just stay away for 30 days, man. That if they can make the 30 days, they'll get their freedom. Such a deal seems fair. Wow, so they like to then. Ah, yeah, yeah, now I understand why they, they went, they volunteered. They told them that, yo, if you survive for 30, if you don't sleep for 30 days, we could let you go. Them, things turn slightly dark around the four day mark when the subjects start discussing war and the horrors they've seen. They speak of traumas, continual nightmares, other Damn. ghastly things they witnessed. Day five, and things get worse. The men start showing signs of psychosis, talking to themselves, and things that are not there. They grow paranoid. Bro, we need to sleep. We need to sleep. We need to sleep. Say you cannot, you cannot go long without sleep because your brain would. Um, I don't want to lie to you guys, but something happens to your brain that you die if you don't sleep. There's the movie on Netflix about that shit. Um, if I remember the name, I'll let you know about sleep. I'll let you know. Out ...of each other and start whispering into those microphones, telling stories about the other subjects. The researchers, of course, know all about sleep deprivation. After five days, the mind can turn on a person. Hallucinations can seem... Yep, yep, yep. I was trying to explain to you. Thank you. You're going to give us the fact. After five days, your mind starts to be like, yo, nigga, who is you? real and horrifying. 
but they wondered was it the loss of sleep or the gas itself. Mm. Suspicions about the gas effects were more solid at day 9, when one guy just started screaming, howling like a banshee and running up and oh, down shit. the room. He screamed so much he seemed to tear his- Why when I see this I remember a wop? This is supposed in this house, this is supposed in this house. His vocal cords, because after a few hours he squeaked like a children's toy. A few more days passed and there was an eerie silence. The men could not be seen from the cameras. Oh, they shit. were alive for sure since the oxygen levels indicated five breathing men, but where were they? The researchers hadn't wanted to interrupt the study, but they felt that they had no choice, and so said into an intercom, we're opening the chamber to test the microphones. Step away from the door and lie flat on the floor or you will be shot. Compliance will earn one of you immediate freedom. They heard one voice okay. respond. It said, we no longer want to be freed. What Yo! Had they been getting ripped on that gas and were now addicted? The researchers said there's nothing we can do but open the door. They opened the vents and let fresh air displace the residual stimulant. What the? What? I've never heard of this, man. This shit is fucked up. Researchers heard next was the men screaming again, pleading for more of that damn fine gas. WTF, thought one of the Russians. Those Yo, guys that shit was drags, man. What the fuck was, uh huh. Seriously hooked. They opened the doors on day 15 and to their surprise saw one man was dead. You know what the scene looked like because we laid that out for you in the intro, but we didn't tell you what happened shortly after the gruesome discovery of the half-eaten man and the wounded survivors. On closer inspection, the researchers saw that the wounds on the men were very bad. They looked as if they might have been self-inflicted too. They had torn the skin. Ah! What the fuck, man? and muscles from their own chests, which revealed the horrific sight of the men's lungs. Each man, it had seemed, had performed this macabre surgery on himself. Blood vessels that were still working had been removed. Other internal- ah! The fuck is- Organs were seen laid out on the floor like a piece of art, and the men were going to eat those morsels. They were dining on their own bodies and doing it with enthusiasm. The researchers called for backup, not daring to go near those poor- what the fuck do we eating themselves? Like damn self me eating myself and I oh, the fuck man? They closed the door to howls of the men pleading for the gas to come back. When soldiers arrived to help remove the subjects, the extrication process wasn't exactly fun. One of the subjects ripped a man's throat right out, while another soldier had his balls removed. Five soldiers <laughs> lost. <laughs> My ball. They removed his balls. Bro, I feel like if you lose your balls, I think you should die, man. I think I would commit suicide. If somebody took my balls, I will, I will, I will kill myself. My balls or dick, you can survive without those. But who are you without balls or dick? Hmm? Lost their lives in total, but some of the victims took their own lives after the event. Once the subjects were out, the doctors injected enough morphine into them to sedate a Canadian moose. But the men still fought like wild beasts. One subject bled out and his heart stopped beating, but he still carried on screaming, Give me gas! I need the gas! Fuck? A doctor had some bones broken during that grim spectacle. The three others were eventually sedated and strapped and moved to a secure facility. The researchers talked to each other saying, And this is a true story. That's the thing that fucks me up things like, that wasn't meant to happen, was it? They hated to admit it, but maybe the Nazis, the Brits, and the Americans had done the right thing and just plying their troops with top-notch crank. The surgeons got to work on putting the missing organs and bits of viscera back into one man, but this guy almost broke through his restraints. When the docs finally got the anesthetic into him, the man's heart stopped and he died right on the spot. The autopsy Rawr. showed he had broken nine bones and his muscles were torn all over his body. When they tried to fix up the next man, they decided two deaths were enough and didn't use an anesthetic. They patched him up nice, sewing his ruptured organs and laying skin grafts on him. The head surgeon said this man should not be alive after what he's gone through, but he admired his own work. A nurse commented that during the surgery the beast had been smiling at her. She did wonder how male carnal instincts can remain functioning during the worst times. Maybe with death comes the need to create something new, she philosophized, but quickly shook herself out of her reverie. Um. I am sorry if you are watching this during the night. I am sorry. If you are watching my video during the night, I am sorry. I think you should go with some Tom and Jerry, some Simpsons, some, you know, something light. I am, I apologize. This shit is gruesome. Nasty.
delivery. The man suddenly started making a wheezing sound as if he wanted to say something. The nurse, quick to catch on, handed him a pen and a pad below it. The man wrote, keep cutting. Wow, she thought- What the fuck? Maniac, man. She just crazy, fam. She just crazy. What a maniac. She was glad she would not reciprocated his flirty smile. As for the other maniac, he laughed like a hyena during his bodily reconstruction. He said he wanted that gas, the good stuff. My nigga, I would have left. I would have gone home, quit my job, go about my business. And when asked why, he said he just needed it to stay awake. The surgeon mused, if these guys weren't so hell-bent on eating themselves, they'd make excellent night shift custodians, cleaners perhaps, or maybe security. But he knew all too well that they couldn't be trusted to wash their hands. Then a former KGB agent had a why is people first thought is to make people slaves? What the fuck, man? An excellent idea. Something that had amazingly escaped everyone else's thoughts. Why not put these poor suckers back on that gas? He said it seems the problems all start when they all go into withdrawal. Hi, they're okay, if not a bit hyper and paranoid. We can work with that. Once back on the gas, they were fine and dandy. But then something strange happened. The EEG monitor showed crazy brain activity. But then it just died down. One man flatlined. Finally, he just died. His last boost of that junk had done him in, or at least it seemed so. The so he had an overdose. Okay. The last guy ended up back in the study room with the other guy seemingly dead on the bed. But three researchers were in there too. Suddenly, one of the researchers shot the commander and then shot the subject. He then shouted out loud, I won't be locked in here with these things, not with you. What are you? I must know. The subject that was shot but evidently was not dead replied, Have you forgotten so easily? We are you. Oh, we are the madness that lurks oh, within you shit. all, begging to be free at every moment. Yo I, got, yo, I got goosebumps, man. Look at my hair, man. Spider-Man out here in these streets. Yo, I, I, what the fuck, bro? What the fuck? I got goosebumps. Yo, I'm sorry. If you're watching this at night, yo. Watch me tomorrow, man, during the, during the day, man. Fuck me. We are you. We are the madness that lurks within you all, begging to be free at every moment in your deepest animal mind. We are what you hide from in your beds every night. We are what you sedate into silence and paralysis when you go to the nocturnal haven where we can not That was almost the end. But for good measure, the researcher put a bullet into the man's chest, which might have breached the Hippocratic Oath somewhat. But hey, harsh times call for harsh measures. The end. So a lot of people seem to think this all actually happened. Now without much investigation, one can easily tell by reading this catastrophic flash fiction that it's written by someone whose grammatical skills need improving. Not only that though, the story simply doesn't make sense at times. Quite a few times someone dies and then just comes back to life, and we don't think it's on purpose by the storyteller. He just forgets what he said or her. On another part, the writer says that the oxygen levels indicated the men were alive and the researchers knew that and then in the next part he said the researchers were not sure if they'd all died. But there's more- So tell me, is it real or not? So I can stay away from Russia. Shout out to my Russian folks though. More than bad writing that gives this away. Hmm, where do we start? Well, we might not need to tell you that you cannot rip out vital organs and lay them on the floor like a bunch of textbooks. That's pure right. fiction. Those men would have died from blood loss or shock. Remember that they right. were discovered like this and left for some time before the soldiers came. Okay, right. you say, but that was the gas working. This was a secret experiment that went wrong. High on that wicked drug, maybe men could routinely come back from the dead and rip out their own organs and even do a bit of flirting when the mood took them. How do we know that it isn't true? Well, there is the matter of recorded history and plausible science. No gas has ever been discovered that can keep a person awake for 15 days. Never mind turn that person into a self-loathing zombie. There okay, okay, so it's not true. Just tell me, bro! There is no history of the experiment anywhere but on a website that's known for its scary, fictional, I'll say it again, fictional tales. It would be mm. astounding if one author alone, writing badly from his or her bedroom, had access to more secret information than the CIA and the British Secret Services. As we said in the story, and we embellished this part ourselves, many soldiers on all sides of the war broke so bad that they could stay awake longer. The officers were handing out that stuff like candy, but not even the most dedicated ice fiend could stay awake for 15 days. And those badly buzzed soldiers would have likely only done 24 to possibly 36 hours awake. The Damn. Pentagon has even done studies on this, and even if men are forced to stay awake for more than 48 hours, they will become pretty slow and pretty much useless as soldiers. They'll make tons of mistakes, which is not ideal. Bro, we need sleep. We need sleep. 
the fuck? What are my neighbors doing? Deal in war when you have to be constantly alert. Sure, the speed helped the Germans with their blitzkrieg attacks, but the drugs had to be taken with some precautions. With this in mind, the Russians would not have even tried this experiment. There is something called Morphin Syndrome that can cause severe delirium and very bad insomnia, and sufferers can go into a dreamlike state. We say dreamlike because even if they don't sleep, they will have microsleeps. Plus, no one with this disease has ever started eating themselves. Sure, perhaps a noxious agent sprayed into a room full of guys can kill someone, but it's very unlikely it could turn them into gas-addicted zombies. There's nothing in scientific literature that supports anything in this experiment. There's another thing that can cause massive sleep loss, and that's called fatal familial insomnia. But that's okay. passed down through genes and isn't caused by environmental agents. And again, it doesn't and it will never make someone just want to rip out their own organs and eat them. There's just nothing that exists in this world that aligns with the story, and if it did, we would expect it to have appeared in medical journals before it became an internet meme. Then again, many of you have been asking in the comments how we managed to put out so many episodes per day. Maybe the entire staff of the infographic show are crank-addicted zombies with an undying lust for human flesh after all. Of course, that's preposterous. But isn't that exactly what a team of crank-addicted zombies with an undying lust for human flesh would want you to think? The Russian sleep experiment isn't a bad story, but it could have been better. Sleep deprivation is actually a torture that has been used by militaries, and that itself can drive a person half crazy. Still, in this story, when you add the addictive gas and the organ rug and the reanimation, it just isn't believable. What are you talking about? But if you like scary stories, then we suggest you watch some of these insanely creepy shows. Do these horrifying internet stories scare you? Try not to be scared challenge, and most terrifying ghost stories. Yeah. Yeah, that was a, a wild ride. Um, I hope you guys are not watching this video tonight because that was a little bit scary. But it's good to know that this it's it's not true. It's not true. Story is fiction. I hope it's fiction, man. That's what I'm gonna tell myself that it's fiction, so I can sleep better at night. Yeah, man. Um, after that, I don't know if you guys enjoy me watching. A Russian this stuff. researcher enters. Oh, a hold on, hold on. We we'll start again. If you guys enjoyed me watching stuff like this, man, let me know. He has more videos more scary shit for us to react to yeah uh drop a like 10 likes 20 likes i'll react to the next one uh, i don't know man i don't know what to say man i'll see you guys tomorrow man peace